Hey, guys and gals, great evening to you and hope you're doing well. Today, I'm going to talk to you about personality styles, a critical distinction when it comes to making presentations. And one of the most important areas that we have to understand is our is this understanding of other people's styles. We've always talked about this. People like people who are like them. And in the most ideal world, our goal is to be versatile at what we do, meaning that we have to be able to adapt to other people's style, the way they buy their words, their tonality, their body language, and so on. So today, I'm going to talk to you about the different personality styles. We're going to talk about the driver. We're going to talk about the analytical. We're going to talk about the amiable. And we're going to talk about the expressive. And we're going to give you the distinctions on each one of those areas. So that way, you can have a very clear idea of what it's going to take to be very, very successful at the highest level of working with personality styles. So as we get into this, I'm going to veer off here. I'm going to just give you a quick preview of some of the thoughts and then we'll get into some of the bullet points about the different personality styles as we proceed here. So let's first talk about <clears throat> understanding what the personality styles are. So I think the big question we always have to ask ourselves is what is the definition of versatility? What is the defini definition of versatility? And the definition of versatility is the ability to adapt quickly to a wide variety of people in a wide variety of ways. Now, Folks, real important, great salespeople, top salespeople, superstars do more business simply, do more business than most people simply because they have the ability to adapt to a wide variety of people very, very quickly. They have a high degree of versatility. They have the ability, and I'll repeat this, to adapt to a wide variety of people quickly. And they have a high degree of versatility. Now, I want you to think about this very fundamental scenario. Let's say you go out and you get a presentation. And let's say you make the perfect presentation. You have followed all seven steps to the T of the presentation process. You pre-qualified, you ask all the questions. The seller is actually highly motivated. They have a place they want to go to. They want to make this happen, okay? You go out there and you deliver a professional package of information. You call and confirm that the seller is going to be there. You've answered all their questions. All the parties are going to be in attendance. You show up there in advance, prepared, you've driven the neighborhood, you have understand You understand your comps, you're prepared mentally, emotionally, physically, and you follow the presentation verbatim. On top of that, the seller and you agree on a price. Guys and gals, everything is perfect, but you leave without the listing. They want to think it over, but you feel that you did a good job and secretly tell yourself as you're in the presentation before, during the presentation, oh man, I've got this, I, everything's going well, and they love me and they end up signing with somebody else. If that hasn't happened to you, I'm gonna tell you, it's gonna happen, okay? It's gonna happen. So we have to ask ourselves, folks, what went wrong, okay? Success in sales is directly related to making the client comfortable, and some there, somewhere along the line in this particular scenario, because they didn't sign the contract, they told you they wanna think about it, somewhere along the line, you fell short, okay? You fell short. So if we can understand why we fell short and identify that, then, we're on a road to better success the next time around. Now, more than likely, the client didn't like or feel that you were the agent they wanted to do business with. And it's probably because you lacked versatility. And we'll talk about that in a minute. And the most defining characteristics of the super salespeople, the top producers, is the ability to make the client feel comfortable and confident about their decision. So let's talk about what versatility is not. Versatility does not mean you'll be comfortable in every sales situation, okay? It's a myth that we can walk into every situation and everything's going to go perfect. It doesn't always happen like that in a huge portion of the time. It's not like that at all, okay? Again, versatility does not mean that, you're, you, that you'll be comfortable in every situation. It does mean that the client will be comfortable is what we have to understand. Now, we may not be comfortable being somebody else's personality or being versatile in the situation, but is that really our goal? Is it about us or is it about them? That's right. It's about them. It's about them feeling comfortable and confident. So. Being versatile in sales means at times that you purposely take on a degree of discomfort in yourself in order to meet the client's needs. You purposely take on discomfort for yourself. In other words, you're giving up the comfort in order to meet the needs of the client. Now, one out of every four clients will share your personality style. One out of every four clients will share your personality style in most situations. And in those cases, folks, you're going to feel real comfortable, won't you? They're just like you, okay? You're care carrying on the way they like to be carried on and you guys really, really connect because you're the same. If you're an analytical and they're an analytical, oh my gosh, you guys are in heaven. If there's a driver and, and, uh, and you're a driver, oh my gosh, there's a big battle, but you're in heaven, okay? If they're an amiable and you're an amiable, same thing goes on with expressives. I think you know what I mean. So again, let me repeat that. 
being versatile in sales mean that you purposely take on a degree of discomfort in yourself in order to meet the client's needs and that one out of every four clients that you're, that you're are going to share your style. And in those cases, you're going to feel absolutely, totally comfortable. That means 75% of the time, what? The things that make you feel comfortable will have the opposite effect on the client. That means 75% of the time, the things that make you feel comfortable will have the opposite effect on the client. For clarity, again, if 25% of the people that you're speaking with are like you, you're going to be very comfortable. If 75% of those people are not like you, you're going to be uncomfortable, but you have to make them feel comfortable and you got to be like them. Now, I will say that the average agent, okay, as a coach and working in this business for over 35 years and myself included, that the average agent never, ever comes close to fulfilling their production potential. And the really good agents are many times losing 20 to 30 transactions a year because they don't have the ability to adapt themselves to the people that they are talking to. Let me repeat my thoughts on this. The average agent never cl comes close, folks, comes close to their production potential because the really good and the really good agents are as many times losing 20 to 30 transactions per year because they don't have the ability to adapt to the people that they are talking to. Very important distinction. So do the math. Write down your average commission check. Yeah, you got that down? Now multiply that times 20. Now that's how much additional money that you can make in the next 12 months by increasing your what? Your versatility. All right. So to develop more versatility and ultimately make more money, you must understand the four personality styles and to identify what you are first. OK, to develop more versatility and ultimately make more money, you must understand the four personality styles and identify what you are first. Knowing what kind of personality style you are is a real important thing, would you say? All right. So in this particular audio, I'm going to cover with you the characteristics of each of the four styles, okay? We're going to talk about what motivates them and how they make decisions. We're going to talk about some tips on how to quickly identify somebody. This is very cool. You're going to have the ability to identify somebody pretty quickly by looking at them physically, the way they dress, maybe how their home is de decorated, maybe their occupation. It'll give you a clear distinction on how you, act, how you can identify the type of style that they are. We're going to understand the challenges in dealing with each style and the best way to communicate with them, all right? And the best way to communicate with them. So let's first talk about the expressive. 